Hello, I'm Miriam Grace Ko, editor at Rappler, and you are tuned in to Ask Your Election Lawyer. Sa seryang ito ng Rappler, sasagutin namin ang inyong mga katanungan tungkol sa pangangampanya at pagboto. The rules are practically new and the issues are particularly heated in 2022 because this is the first time that we are holding elections amid a pandemic. Marami rin konsiderasyon ngayon tungkol sa pangangampanya sa social media dahil wala ito noong mga nakakaraang eleksyon. Kasama ko ngayon ulit si Attorney Emil Maranyon, isang columnist ng Rapper. Si Attorney Emil ay election lawyer specializing in the automated elections at siya ay founding partner ng Trujillo, Ansaldo, and Maranyon Law Offices. Hello ulit, Emil. Hello sa inyong lahat. Magandang araw po. Emil, um, recently ang Department of Education naglabas ng statement reminding or warning um, teachers about engage against engaging in partisan political activity. At the same time, napag-alaman ng Rappler na yung DILG sa Region 8 ay naglabas ng memo sa kanilang mga empleyado and again, warning them against engaging in partisan political activities. But a few years ago, you, you wrote an explainer for Rappler saying that hindi blanket prohibition yung nasa ating mga patakaran tungkol sa mga government employees na nangangampanya. Babalikan natin yun, Emil. Unang-una, ano ba ang sinasabi ng Civil Service Commission at ng Commission on Elections in the past about the involvement of government employees and teachers? Okay. So, medyo malalim yung pinanggagalingan ng uh, rules as regards campaigning and government officials or employees. So, uh, ang pinakauna niyan is nakasulat po sa Constitution that government employees and government officials are not allowed to engage in partisan political activity. Even in the Administrative Code of 1987, nakasulat din po doon na yung mga government employees and uh, officials are not allowed to engage in election meeting or partisan political activity. Even in the Omnibus Election Code, merong ding election offense doon na nakalagay na bawal mag-intervene yung government officials and employees in election meeting or partisan political activity. There is also a ban on donation ng, from a government employee or official to, to a candidate. So ito po yung batas or yung, legal, yung pinanggagalingan po ng mga CSU rules na naglilimita sa karapatan ng, ng mga government employees to actually engage in election meeting or mag-participate sa isang election. So, ang sinasabi ng CSE rules is, uh, to, 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 to summarize it or to simplify it, is pinagbabawalan po yung active campaigning or aktibong pangangampanya. However, ang sinasabi na natin dito is, hindi naman absolute yung rule. Hindi naman sinasabi na dapat completely hindi mag-participate yung mga government officials and employees. Ang sinasabi na natin dito is merong mga limitasyon. And yun po yung dapat na, na pag-usapan po. Uh, rather than saying uh, or, 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 or uh, coming out with a memo with a blanket prohibition, which is hindi naman po tama under our constitution and under our law. Siguro, uh, ang, ang sunod na tanong ko, merong bang legal na definition kung ano ang electioneering at ano ang tinuturing na partisan political activity at yung isang kababanggit mo lang na phrase active campaigning what constitutes active campaigning ang, ang sinasabi natin na partisan political activities ito yung pag-form ng organization or political party pag-hold for example ng political caucuses or conferences or meeting or rally ito yung paggawa ng speech or pagsali sa mismong pangangampanya pamimigay po ng mga leaflets or campaign literature or directly na pagsulisit ng vote. So ito po yung pinagbabawa, ito po yung konsepto ng partisan political activity under the Omnibus Election Code. But ang sinasabi naman natin dito is this is not uh, absolute. Uh, in 1992, uh, the CSC issued uh, me yung Memorandum Circular Number no. 9, which actually provides that um, 
pwede for example magsuot ng t-shirt, ng cap or election paraphernalia ah uh, yung 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 mga yung uh, government employees provided na wala pong pangalan ng kandidato or political party na nakasulat doon. For for example, ang sinasabi din doon is hindi din pinagbabawal na maging na umattend ng political rally ah uh, ang ang mga government officials because we have to consider that it is actually the opportunity of of this uh, government officials and employees who are also voters to get to know the candidates kung whether sa personal ba gusto nila yung appeal gusto nila yung sila sabi hindi naman bawal po yan ang ang sinasabi doon sa memorandum circular ng CSC ang pinagbabawal po is yung continuous presence ibig sabihin yung paulit-ulit na presence in a rally kasi po ibig sabihin niya hindi na a purpose mo is para makilala yung kandidato but it is already like an active, na. <laughs> active support na doon sa kandidato bawal mm-hmm. din daw po yung ano yung yung tinatawag na continuous companionship or sumasama ka sa actual na kampanya to the point na identified ka na doon sa kandidato so these are some of the uh, prohibited acts and yung clarification na, na nilabas ng CSC noong 1992 in the so-called Memorandum Circular Number 9. Pero yung isang tinakal mo sa iyong kolong dati na, na Joint Memorandum ng Civil Service Commission at Commission on Elections, 2016 to, mas mahigpit kasi may warning na about, you know, um, dismissal, imprisonment, disqualification from public office. Anong nangyari between 1992 and 2016 and ano yung sunod natin ngayon? Actually po yung yung sinasabi natin na 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 batas for example the omnibus election code prohibiting the intervention of government officials and employees. Merong merong election offense naman po yun. In other words, may penalty na imprisonment po yun. Uh, mm-hmm. even the administrative code there's a possibility of administrative offense pwede kang ma-dismiss or ma-suspend. Uh, ibig sabihin po, uh, way back in 1987 naman yung administrative code. Ang sinasabi natin na all of these restrictions have been existing for for a long time, since 1985, since 1987, and it has been there all the time. But yung nga, ang ginawa lang ng CSC is to actually come up with, with, with more specific examples, more specific prohibitions, kasi nga naman, kung ikaw yung ordinaryong empleyado, Pag pinagsabihan ka na, o bawal yung partisan pag political activity, kung wala ka namang alam sa batas, na next question na tatanungin mo, anong saklaw po nun? Anong sakop po nun? So that's the reason na naglabas yung CSE, yung CSE ng further clarification on the scope of what is allowed and what is not, and, and what is not allowed. To be clear, you're not against this. No? May wisdom behind this kung bakit nililimitahan. No? Ang nililinaw lang natin is limitado yung participation sa political activities na allowed sa government employees pero hindi totally bawal, di ba? That is correct. Uh, ang, ang wisdom nito is of course you want a government that appears to be neutral because can you imagine a government sila yung may power of the purse? Ibig sabihin, pwede magamit yung resources ng gobyerno for to to actually improve the chances of a particular candidate pwedeng gumamit yung resources or facility ng gobyerno para actually tulungan yung particular candidate so uh, we want to to make the government neutral so that everyone will have a a equal playing field pagdating sa eleksyon but yun again po ang ang pinag-uusapan nga natin is tama ho ba yung regulasyon because ang um, base interpretation ng COMELEC and even the CSC issuances, there are certain officials that are actually exempted from election meeting. For example, political offices. Mm-hmm. Political offices. So, ito yung mga presidente, yung sa kongreso, yung mga senador, and even their confidential staff, and lahat ng elective officials. So, if you come to think of it, ano ang wisdom ngayon ng batas in relation to this exemption? Because these people actually who are exempted are the very people who are actually calling the shots in government. They are the one who decides on the budget. They are the one who decides on how to use a particular facility. So it's actually, uh, it, it's a question of whether with all the exemptions, may sense pa ba yung batas? 
Because kung isipin niyo, what if for example, you are a janitor. You, so pasok ka sa katakot-takot na prohibition. But ano ho ba yung harm ko yung janitor nag-express na support to a particular candidate? So ano yung harm as against a president actively supporting a particular candidate? Yet exempt siya. So I think this should be a part of a continuing conversation as regards yung scope or yung ano yung dapat bawal at pinagbabawal po. Ah, siguro simula tayo dun sa, isa-isahin natin yung tanong, simula tayo dun sa when does the prohibition take effect? Hindi naman siguro all year all year round ay bawal mag-engage sa politika ang government employees. Okay, because of the recent pronouncement of the Supreme Court as regards the meaning of the word candidate, because again, the word partisan political activity, and even electioneering, presupposes the existence of a candidate. candidate. But under the most recent decision of the Supreme Court, there is no candidate until the start of the campaign period. So this would mean that for national candidates, nagsastart lang po ito ng February 8, 2022. And pagdating sa local candidates, nagsastart lang po ito ng March 25, 2022. So ibig sabihin po nito, kung apasok lang po yung prohibition sa government officials and employees, pag-apak ng campaign period, which is February 8, in March 25. So, ibig, since din distinguish yung um, campaign period ng national at local, pwede ba kung piloso po ako ng government employee ako. So, by February 8, hindi na ako pwedeng mag-engage in electioneering for a presidential candidate but I can still, quote-unquote, engage in political activities for a gubernatorial or mayoral candidate. Pwede, tama ba? Well, uh, unang-una, I have to, to warn din ano, yung, yung mga nakikinig na government officials and employees that actually the, 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 the Civil Service Commission rules do not distinguish as regards the campaign period or the meaning of the word candidate, which I just discussed. Ang sinasabi ko lang is if, for example, dumating tayo sa pagkakataon na kasuhan kayo, that is actually a valid defense. But when you read actually the rules of the COMELEC, quite clear doon na actually from the time of the filing of the COC, dapat hindi na nag-engage electioneering. But then again, kung legal sa legal lang yung pag-uusapan, how can there be electioneering or partisan political activity if wala pang kandidato? So yun po yung ating, uh, in a way, yun po yung magandang pag-usapan na the, the scenario that you actually said is very much possible under this new interpretation of the Supreme Court as regards the meaning of the word candidate. And then yung prohibition, since ang covered ay election period, ibig sabihin ba nito beyond election day, covered sila nito? Kasi ang election period is until June 8, I think. No, actually, ang covered na nito is the campaign period, uh, which means the campaign period, which means from uh, February 8, 2022 to March. At tapos yung isa for local is March 25 until before the election, May uh, until election day. So hindi siya nag-extend beyond election. Okay. Next question: Who is covered by all these prohibitions? Uh, yung covered po is as, as a general rule, uh, lahat po ng nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno ay sako po ng prohibition or ng limitasyon. Ang, siguro ang pag-usapan natin, ano po yung hindi sako? Uh, kasi uh, as, a gen as a general rule, kahit permanent ka, casual, contractual, job order, under CSA rule, sakop ka ng prohibition. Ang hindi sakop ay yung tinatawag na political offices. So political offices, for example, ito yung nga uh, yung, yung uh, definition dun sa Quinto versus Comilec is my expectation for you to actually campaign all year round. So for example, uh, elective office officials. So mayor, presidente, senador, congressman, so exempt sila. But ang, ang sinasabi lang ng CSC rules is hindi po sakop yung barangay officials because under the law, they are supposed to be non-partisan. Non Anong activities ang covered ng prohibition? Anong pwede, anong hindi? Kung government employee ka, kung teacher ka? 
Well, ang teacher kasi medyo complicated sa gutin, no? Because some of the I teachers would actually that, serve, oh, would actually serve, they serve during election day. Oh, they might serve on election day. So, yung limitasyon nila is also different as regards government officials and employees who are not serving in the election. Because oh, sige, mahirap naman. Distinguish. Mahi na. Oh, mahirap naman po yun kung nagsiserve ka sa election yet nakikita ka na nagmamanifest ng support mo sa sa, hmm. sa sa mga kandidato. But as regards ordinary government officials and employees, na hindi po sa na hindi teachers or hindi ba serve sa election the the basic uh, rights under the law is number one they have the right to express their views on the current political problems or issues uh, this is quite clear in the omnibus election code this is an exception so the, it is not electioneering when you want to talk about political problems or political issues or even to criticize the government that is not prohibited number two you are allowed to actually mention the names of candidates for political office uh, whom you support. So if you, you are supporting candidate X, you are actually allowed under the law to mention that name. Ang ibang usapan na po is pinagbabawalan ka na magsulisit ng votes. Ibig sabihin, pinagbabawalan ka na mangampanya. But hindi ka po pinagbabawalan na mag-post, for example, that you are supporting for this particular candidate. And third po is you are also allowed to take part in the different political and electoral activities. Ang pinagbabawalan lang po is bawal ka mag-donate or mag-solicit ng contribution or mamilit po ng subordinate sa bumoto sa particular na candidate. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Attorney Emil. Kasi every election period, yan ang laging tanong ng mga nagbabasa at nanonood sa Rappler. Um, so, to summarize, hindi absolute ang prohibition sa campaign involvement, political involvement ng government officials. They can discuss issues, they can mention the names of their preferred candidates, but they are not allowed to solicit votes or to donate into specific campaigns. Uh, so, balik tayo dun sa question natin kanina. Bawal nga bang mga kampanya ang mga teacher at government employees? Narinig natin ang explanation ni Attorney Emil Maranyon. Um, hindi absolute ang bawal, pero may mga limitasyon. If you have questions about campaigns and elections, please let us know by tagging us on Twitter at rappler.com and at phvote. You can also uh, send a message to our to Rappler's Facebook Messenger and you can send us an email at info at rappler.com and we will tackle your questions in our next episodes. Thank you again for joining us.